too much this and there's too much that and I was like I I'm just not there I don't believe that Jesus is really at the end of the day who he said he is I don't really believe that he's going to do what he said he's going to do and that what's going to happen at the end of the world at the end of this age is going to happen I just don't believe that and so I'm just going to live my life I want to tell you something this morning that regardless of where you stand in this, whether you stand on the side that, hey, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God and, and He's going to deliver and He's God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness that cannot be shaken. And you're like, in the name of Jesus, and you're like singing and dancing, and you're all that. And yeah, you get indulgent sometimes. Yeah, 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 but whether you're in that group or in the other group that. That's pretty nice. You all sing good. I love coming here. It's got some great refreshments in the back, some great people and so forth. I'll go to y'all parties, but that's just way too much. I got, <laughs> I got something to tell you. Regardless of where you are, I want to tell you that you're not alone. If you don't believe it is absolutely, perfectly normal and rational, to feel that way and to believe that way. It's perfectly normal. You know why? Because our entire faith in Christianity is based on one fact, that Jesus raised from the dead and we all know that nobody comes back from the dead. But, and that's one of my favorite words in the Bible, is but. And I feel a song coming up because it's true because in the Bible there are some big butts in there that just intercept what's normal and what's rational and and it's like who oh, not as normal and rational yet but God and so I can stand here and say this because I feel it coming on so I'm because I'm the most saints I like big butts and I cannot lie But God raised Jesus from the dead. But God raised Jesus from the dead. And, and, and the resurrection changed all of that rational stuff. And a new order, a new covenant, a new thing was established. <laughs> you know, our story continues. It says, after Peter and John left. Peter and they went home, right? So we read there. Mary... Uh, Mary, you know, she, again, the woman back then wore all these big clothes. She couldn't run as fast as Peter and John. I don't know. She gets, she gets there. And she comes back and she's at the empty tomb. She's by herself. And she's like crying and crying and crying. And then this angel just pop in and pop out. One starts talking to her. But then she's like, you know, she's still crying. She doesn't believe him. And then this guy starts talking to her. And this guy starts talking to her. And, and, she's, and, and, and he says this here. Um... <laughs> Let me see if I don't have a tea, you know. But anyway, he starts talking to her, and he, she's crying, and he calls her name, he's like, Mary. Before he called her name, she thought he was the gardener, because they were the, <laughs> they were the garden too, it was a gardener. And, and she was asking him, did you take his body, you know, please let me find his body, I spent all this money, and all this embalming stuff, just what embalming. When he said Mary, she recognized it was Jesus. She recognized it was Jesus. The resurrection changed all of that. And she, she's like, and she runs to do what normal, rational woman would do when they see somebody that they haven't seen for a long time. But rational men wouldn't do because the guy's supposed to be dead. She runs to him and he's like, hold on a second, hold on a second, don't, don't hug me yet, you know, I still haven't really, because he went back in, into heaven, he ascended into heaven. She's like, he's like, don't hug me yet. And then she was like so happy about that and her sorrow turned into joy. And after Jesus did that, he like, two men are walking along the road and he, he shows up next to these men and he starts talking to them and the man's like, man, they, they killed a good man. You know, I was, I was like, believing in him, I thought he was going to be this Messiah, I thought he was the man. And, you know, he's done, he's out, and then they invite, they're talking, Jesus is talking to them, and they invite Jesus over for dinner. 
Jesus is there, and they look and I'm like, snap, this is Jesus. <laughs> and, and so they see him, and then, and then, you know, <laughs> that Peter and John goes back and tells the disciples, and, 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 and of course they didn't believe it. And then, so they're all in a room together, and then Jesus just shows up in the room to them. And they were, they were <laughs> really, really terrified when Jesus showed up in a locked room. And they thought they saw a ghost, right? Because only ghosts show up in a locked room. And it's natural to be terrified. And so what happened was they're like, God, Jesus is like, I'm not a ghost. It's me. It's me. Talk together. And later on, we know that Jesus ate with them. And everybody knows that ghosts can't eat. If you leave food out for the spirits, guess what? The, the food is going to be there tomorrow. But Jesus had fish with them later on. But one guy wasn't there. It was Thomas. One of the disciples. I just love this story. And you know why I love this story so much? I keep telling you because I'm so excited. Is that it is so doggone real. It is absolutely real. This is what would really happen if we were here right now and Jesus and a dead friend <laughs> walked in the like, we'd be scared, we wouldn't tell anybody or that we think it's nonsense. So when they told Thomas, they said, Thomas, we've seen Jesus. I like Thomas because Thomas is such a real guy. Thomas says this. I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands and I put my finger in his side. Then maybe <laughs> I believe it. And by the way, you can call me, you can insert Gary Walls there because I know myself. That would be me. I'm like, child, please. <laughs> Eight days later, the disciples were together and Thomas was like, still no Jesus. I'm parody and I'm kind of inserting that. That's not written. But it took eight days later, they were together. And then poof, Jesus showed up again. And like, Jesus, you really got to stop doing that, man. You're like scaring people. And so here's what happened next. Jesus looked at Thomas. As if, you know, somebody had told Jesus and he told Thomas, like, hey, Thomas. See my hands? Put your finger here. Hey, Thomas, put one finger here from one hand. Thomas, take your other hand. Put it into my side. And then he says something, which is my message to everybody here this morning. He told Thomas that. He said, Thomas, stop doubting and believe. I predicted it. I told you how it was going to happen. I told you. It happened. Now it's time to stop doubting and believe. And if Jesus only appeared to those guys, then maybe we'd say those guys made it up. But he appeared to over 500 other people. 550 people? It's hard to get a story together. I can't even get a story together with, when I ask my boys, what happened to the microwave that's broken? I get two different stories. 550 people said, I've seen him. I've seen him. And you know, these group of men who were sitting scared and cowering, they were scared because they knew if they mentioned Jesus' name, they would meet the same faith as Jesus wouldn't risk their lives and start spreading the message of Jesus if they weren't convinced that he had raised himself from the dead. I wouldn't be here, we wouldn't be here if those men hadn't seen and experienced something that convinced them that risking my life 
is worth it because here is a man who said some things and he delivered. They were willing to risk their life for something they experienced. And so when I get down in the doldrums, and when I start to question my faith, I don't trust in what I read about. I trust in what I've personally experienced. See, other people can tell you stuff, but when you feel it, when I was growing up, my mother used to say, he who feels it knows it. And that's such a true statement. He who feels it knows it. And I trust in what I've experienced, and I've experienced the realness of this resurrected Jesus in my life. So my original question I asked, what would it take for you to believe that someone you knew was raised from the dead? Answer to that question is, I personally experienced that person who raised from the dead. You won't believe it if anybody else tells you, unless you experience it. You will believe that, but you won't trust in. A couple weeks ago, uh, Donna and I, it was her birthday, and we took off and went, went away for a week and getaway. We're driving to, we're driving to Orlando, and, um, and so she, she and I were talking about some song, and you know, she started looking for the song, and so she couldn't find the song. So I'm driving, and she says, I can't find the song, Gary, can you look for the song for me? I'm like, I'm driving. So I do what everybody's not supposed to do, right? Find the song. But in finding the, looking for the song, I came across another song that I didn't even know was gonna show up in today's message. I didn't know till last night. And that song was an old song. There was a guy named Andre Crouch. He, he was one of the first writers, the first people to start writing songs that weren't hymns. They were like some music that you could dance to and stuff. You know, this group was called Andre Crouch and Disciples. And I heard a song that I hadn't heard in about 20 years. I don't want to tell you the lyrics of that song. I'm going to interject some comments into the lyrics of that song. Because I believe that this song is not only my story, but somewhere in each one of you here, it's part of your story. Here are the lyrics. The lyric says, somebody told me about the joy they had. And somebody told me that in sorrow, they actually could be glad. And then they told me that they were bound, they were like all in bondage, they were like all depressed, they were like all feeling dejected, that's God, what, what's in it for me? But they were bound, but now they're set free. But I didn't think it could be until it happened to me. See, somebody can tell you all kind of stuff. I can tell you about Jesus and his resurrection and the power of Jesus in my life. I can tell you about the joy that I have. And I can tell you that in sorrow, I can be glad. I can tell you that once I was bound, but now I'm set free. But I wouldn't really know that it's true until it happened to me. The next verse it says, because this is my story. Maybe your story stops at the first verse. My story goes on to the second verse. But now I can tell you about the joy I have. And now I can tell you that in sorrow, I could be glad. And now I can tell you that once I was bound, but now I'm set free. But you, 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 you will never know that it's true until it happens to you. See, you'll never know that it's true. No, I didn't think it could be. No, you'll never know that it's true until it happens to you. 
I want to tell you that this morning, all your rational, all your rational thinking is perfectly rational. But there's so much more beyond that. There's a new kind of thing that's established. <laughs> and Jesus says, Jesus telling you this morning, and I'm telling you the same thing this morning, that he wants to change your rational resignation. That this is just the way life is. This is just the way it is. We come, we go, we die. We're depressed. We're... He wants to change your rational resignation into a great expectation. Because you'll never know that it could be true. Because I didn't think it could be. Until it happened to me. You know, this morning, Jesus is saying, guys, I want my resurrection to really matter. Because it's real. It's not, it's not, you know, when I was growing up, we used to say, Jamaicans say things twice. It's a for emphasis. They say, play. This is not a play thing. Our Jamaicans would say, this is not a play play thing. It's a real thing. And God wants to be real. He's like, look. He's like, I sacrificed. I took on all of everything in the world. I took it on for you. And I want you to personally experience. I don't want you to read about it. I want you to experience it. And if you fall into the category where your faith is wavering, I want to pray for you. And if you fall into the category like, maybe there's something. I want to pray that God will reveal himself to you. Or maybe you fall into the category like, look, I know there's something. I want it. I want to pray for you with your eyes closed right now. I'm just ask you to close your eyes and bow your head. I'm going to ask you if this morning, if nobody's looking around except me. I'm not going to ask you to come to the front or anything, but I am going to ask you this. That if you want to experience this in your life, that so that this Easter 2017 won't be something you just read about. That you want to experience it so you can go from believe that to trust in. If you raise your hand, I'll pray for you. Is there anybody? Who this morning, this Easter morning will say, I'm struggling with my faith. And I want to believe, to trust in. Is there anybody? Amen. I see that hand. Is there anybody else? Amen. I see that hand. Is there anybody else? Is there anybody else out there? You see, it's so important that God says, man, I died for this. For this moment here, this April, whatever it is, 2017. One last try. Anywhere on your faith journey, if you'd like me to pray for you, just raise your hand. I'm going to ask you to come up. I see that hand. I see that hand. Anybody else? I see that hand. Anybody else? I see that hand. I see that hand. Anybody else? I see that hand. Anybody else? I see that hand. One last try. Father, I thank you that you did raise from the dead. <laughs> you raised your son from the dead. You raised Jesus from the dead. And that, and that the whole sacrifice, the whole perfect sacrifice that Jesus made meant something and, and counted for something. And that's for me. Lord, I pray for each and every person who raised their hand this morning. Lord, that you will, they will, they will, you will minister them in a real way. And I'll just say this, for anybody who has never asked Jesus to come into their life to say this prayer, that I'm going to say right behind me, just quietly where you are, and you too will begin the experience. Here's a prayer. Heavenly Father, I trust that there is something different about this Jesus who did everything he said that he did, including raising himself up from the dead. I'm struggling, Lord, but 
reveal yourself to me. In a real way, Lord, I put my trust in you. Because if you, anybody who says they can raise themselves from the dead and do it, it's, it's worth trusting. Lord, I pray also for anybody else who here who is going through that struggle. Pray, Lord, that you will just bolster their faith. Even now. That test that's going to happen this week, maybe even tomorrow. Lord, that, Lord, that they'll sense that victory in Jesus. 